Unit Nine. English in the world. Page thirty. Getting started. Activity one. Listen and read. Welcome to English Club. Today I'm going to do a quick quiz to check your knowledge of the English language. Question one: Is English the language which is spoken by most people in the world? Of course it is. Incorrect. Chinese is the language which is spoken by most people in the world. Question two: Does English have the largest vocabulary? Yes, with approximately five hundred thousand words and three hundred thousand technical terms. Yes, spot on. This is due to the openness of the English language. English has borrowed words from many other languages. Yeah, if there weren't so many words, it would be easier for us to master it. Ha <laughs> ha! But the simplicity of form makes English easy to learn. Many English words have been simplified over the centuries. Now, question three: Who can tell me an English word that can operate as a noun, a verb, and an adjective? I think the word subject. Can operate as noun, verb, and adjective. Excellent. In English, the same words can operate as many parts of speech. That's due to its flexibility. Question four: What is the longest word in English which has only one vowel? Is it length? No, I think it's strength. That's right, V. Lastly, question five: Who can tell me at least three varieties of English? American English. Australian English, and、uh, yes, Indian English. Unit nine, page thirty-four. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity five. Listen to the conversations. Do you think the voice goes up or down at the end of each second sentence? Draw a suitable arrow at the end of each line. One. Tom found a watch on the street. No, he found a wallet on the street. Two. Where did Tom find this watch? He found it on the street. Three. Let's have some coffee. But I don't like coffee. Four. Let's have a drink. What would you like? I'd like some coffee. Five. This hat is nice. I know it's nice, but it's expensive. Six. This bed is big. I know it's big, but that one's bigger. Unit nine, page thirty-four. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity six. Read the conversation. Does the voice go up or down on the underlined words? Draw a suitable arrow at the end of each line. Then. Listen, check, and repeat. What make of TV shall we buy? Let's get the Samsung. I think we should get the Sony. It's really nice. But the Samsung is nicer. But the Sony has a guarantee. They both have a guarantee. How much is the Sony? It's six hundred dollars. It's too expensive. I know it's expensive, but it's of better quality. They're both of good quality. Unit nine, page thirty-four. A closer look. One. Pronunciation. Activity four. Listen and repeat. Paying attention to the tones of the underlined words in each conversation. 
One. I'd like some oranges, please. But we don't have any oranges. Two. What would you like, sir? I'd like some oranges. Three. I'll come here tomorrow. But our shop is closed tomorrow. Four. When is your shop closed? It is closed tomorrow. Unit nine. Page thirty nine. Skills two. Listening. Activity one. Listen to four different people talking about speaking and learning languages. Match the summaries to each speaker. There is one extra summary. My first language is French, but I live near the border, so I'm reasonably good at German. I can also get by in Italian. We went to Rome last summer, and I picked up the basics. My mother is Spanish. And my father is French, so I'm bilingual. I'm also fluent in English, which I need for my job. I can have a conversation in Italian, but it's a bit rusty. I used to be quite bad at English. I knew a few words of everyday English that I learnt at school, but I couldn't speak a word of anything else. Last summer, I went to England on holiday. While I was travelling around the country. I picked up enough words and phrases to get by. I was told that my pronunciation was quite good, so when I got home, I decided to learn English properly. Last year, I got a job in a multinational company, so I had to learn English. A friend recommended an English center, and I have been going there for six months. I always enjoy the lessons. And the language is taught in a communicative way. I think I've learned a lot since I started. It's not all fun, though. At the moment, I'm studying for my first exam. Unit nine. Page thirty-nine. Skills two. Listening. Activity two. Listen to the extracts again and answer the questions. My first language is French, but I live near the border, so I'm reasonably good at German. I can also get by in Italian. We went to Rome last summer, and I picked up the basics. My mother is Spanish, and my father is French, so I'm bilingual. I'm also fluent in English, which I need for my job. I can have a conversation in Italian, but it's a bit rusty. I used to be quite bad at English. I knew a few words of everyday English that I learnt at school, but I couldn't speak a word of anything else. Last summer, I went to England on holiday. While I was travelling around the country, I picked up enough words and phrases to get by. I was told that my pronunciation was quite good, so when I got home, I decided to learn English properly. Last year, I got a job in a multinational company, so I had to learn English. A friend recommended an English center, and I have been going there for six months. I always enjoy the lessons, and the language is taught in a communicative way. I think I've learned a lot since I started. It's not all fun, though. At the moment, I'm studying for my first exam.